So when I'm talking to my Latter-day Saint neighbors, I love to ask, um, what are you reading lately? And I like to ask, um, do you enjoy reading the New Testament? And this is helpful for talking with return missionaries too. They were given dedicated time every morning to read the scriptures. So I love to ask, on your mission, were you able to become more acquainted with the New Testament? Um, and virtually every Latter-day Saint will say, um, yes. And many Latter-day Saints genu genuinely will say, actually, the New Testament was their favorite part to read. So I love to kind of funnel this down and ask, um, were you able to read uh, the four Gospels or of, of Latter-day Saints that are just part of normal church life now? Um, uh, what are you going through right now? Are you enjoying the New Testament? Just do that. Yeah, yeah anyway, so I love to um, funnel that down and ask, what of the four Gospels is your favorite? And sometimes I actually have to, to specify Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, what, of, what of those four are your favorite? What have you most enjoyed? And typically a Latter-day Saint will uh, uh, give, give an example of what they, they most love, the Gospel of Luke or the Gospel of John. And then I love to funnel it down even more and say, well, what, what about, say, uh, the Gospel of John did you most enjoy? Or what are some highlights? Or what are some takeaways that really impacted you? Um, what, what are some things that you've read that have really stuck with you? So I kind of like to gently uh, steer it in the direction of, of uh, maybe sharing some Jesus stories. Now, pause for a second here. In other uh, paths of a conversation, other topics come up. And I love to form a bridge with topics that have uh, come up and this funnel of what do you most enjoy in the New Testament? What of the four Gospels is your favorite? Um, and I love to bridge those by asking, uh, what in your view did Jesus say about that? Or what in your reading do you remember Jesus teaching about that? Hmm, what did Jesus say about that? Um, that's just an incredibly important question. Uh, what, in your understanding, in the four Gospels, did Jesus say about that? And a common impulse is to jump off and explain uh, Latter-day Saint theology or Latter-day Saint doctrine or thinking. Um, and I have to gently put it back to, well, what did Jesus say about that in your view? Um, and uh, I often love to transition here to saying, uh, would you mind if I shared a story uh, from the four Gospels about that with you? Or may I share a Jesus story with you? Or perhaps even better, because a lot of Latter-day Saints do have basic background familiarity with the stories. Do you remember when? Oh, do you remember when the story when Jesus? Now there's three topics uh, that are really helpful to share Jesus stories over with Latter-day Saints. And they're over topics that Latter-day Saints find extremely important. Uh, the first is authority. Uh, regarding the authority of Jesus, I love to ask, um, what would you say Jesus taught about authority? Or what would you say, how would you say Jesus uh, uh, exhibited or showed or demonstrated his authority? How did he authorize people also to go do things? Um, and there's a kind of a puzzled look I get on that. What do you mean? And I said, well, uh, may I share a Jesus story with you? When Jesus is coming down the mountain from having delivered the Sermon on the Mount, it says in the, at the end of uh, Matthew chapter 7, Wow, Jesus isn't like the scribes and the Pharisees. No, Jesus, he teaches with authority. And in the, in the Matthew chapters 8 and 9, we get jam-packed examples of nothing but Jesus demonstrating the kind of authority that he has. So next, uh, the, the very next story, there is a centurion, a Roman officer, who sends for Jesus because he has a servant who's sick to the point of death. And Jesus says he'll come and heal his servant. But the centurion says, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not worthy to have you come inside my house. Uh, I know how authority works. He says, I'm a man of authority. I love to emphasize this word too, authority. Um, if you don't know much about the Latter-day Saint faith, authority is very important. So uh, the centurion says, I am a man of authority. And those who are under me, I can tell them, go, and they go. I can tell them, do this, and they do it. I can say, come here, and they come here. Jesus, I know that you can just say the word, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus was astonished that this pagan uh, centurion Roman officer had such great faith. He says, Jesus says, I haven't seen such great faith in all of Israel. So in the next, uh, within the next two chapters, Jesus gets in a boat and he is sleeping like a baby on a pillow. 
uh, at the stern of the boat. And the disciples are freaking out because a storm is threatening them. There's a very terrible, frightening situation where they think they might die. So they wake Jesus up and they say, Jesus, don't you care about us? Is this none of a concern to you? Uh, we're going to die. And Jesus looks up at the wind and the waves. And I love to, uh, in these stories, if you can, at any relevant moment, stop and ask your conversation partner. And then, do you remember what happens next? And oftentimes, there's enough background familiarity where your Latter-day Saint conversation partner can fill in a few of the gaps. And you can invite them to participate a little bit in the storytelling. Jesus looked up at the wind and the waves, and he said, be quiet, silence. Again, our observation, all Jesus had to do was say the word. When Jesus gets to the other end of the lake, uh, he meets uh, men who are full of demons. And these demons are terrified of Jesus. They say, have you come to torment us before the appointed time? Send us into those pigs. And Jesus uh, says, go. And the pigs, thousands of, uh, of sorry, the demons, the thousands of, of demons leave these two men. And they enter a herd of pigs and they rush down uh, a steep bank and they drown in a lake. And people were terrified of what was going on. Uh, Jesus had amazing authority. There's another story of uh, two buddies who had a third friend who was paralyzed. He was lame. Uh, and he could not get close enough to Jesus. Jesus was so popular that um, people were crowding in, pressing in around the house, and you couldn't get close enough. So what their two buddies did is they put their paralyzed friend on a mat and they brought him up to a, the roof of the house and then they, uh, they made a hole in the roof. I would love to know how they did that. And they lowered their friend on a mat. And do you remember what happens next? What did Jesus say? Jesus, uh, impressed by their faith, looks up at the man being lowered and says, Son, what does he say? Your sins are forgiven. And the riffraff in the back, they're thinking in their hearts, Who alone but God has the authority to forgive sins? This man is speaking blasphemy. And Jesus, knowing what they're thinking, he says, I know what you're thinking in your hearts. What's easier for a man to do uh, to say to a paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say to the paralyzed man, get up, take up your mat, and walk? To show you that the Son of Man has the, the what? The authority to forgive sins on earth. He looks up at the paralyzed man and he says, son, get up. Take up your mat and you walk right on out. You go home. And I love to kind of uh, uh, dress this up a little bit with, a, with that kind of the simplicity of it. Um, when you were a child and your, um, when your mother said, do the dishes, you did the dishes. When your father said, go clean your room, you went and you cleaned your room. The, their words were enough. The, the authoritative command was quite sufficient and you did not want them to lay their hands on you. Um, when Jesus Christ says to a paralyzed man, get up and walk, your legs obey <laughs> and you walk right on out. So this is what I'm doing is I'm sharing Jesus stories. Hopefully I'm delighting in it. Um, this helps me as, as an evangelist because I love doing this. And even if I get a resistant um, rejection, I, I can enjoy uh, sharing about the glory of Jesus Christ. And typically my Latter-day Saint conversation partner uh, doesn't have a lot of ammo to accuse me of being uh, anti-Mormon or super critical. I'm just sharing Jesus stories. So anyway, this is priming though my conversation partner for um, <clears throat> with, with illustrations of the authority of Jesus. And I love to go to the very last paragraph of the Gospel of Matthew. I love to ask my Latter-day Saint neighbor, um, at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus sends out the apostles. He authorizes and sends them to go preach, teach, and baptize. Do you remember how Jesus did that? And a lot of Latter-day Saints respond by saying, well, he laid his hands on them to, author, to give them the authority. He did it with priesthood authority by the laying on of hands. And so I like to say, hmm, 
Let's look at it together. So the text says, All authority under heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, uh, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So Jesus' words are very important. And I will be with you to the end of the age. The same way that Jesus can heal a paralyzed man or forgive the sins of a paralyzed man or send demons out or remotely heal the centurion's servant or give Peter a new name, um, the same way that Jesus can do all of that. Like the centurion said, I know I'm a man of authority. All you really have to do is say the word. Jesus speaking with, as, the, as the resurrected Lord, he can uh, simply authorize by the words of his mouth the sending out of his people to preach and teach and baptize. Now, if you're new to Utah, that might seem very oddly simple and obvious, but that's not obvious here in Utah. There's a sense that there's a priestly, ritualistic, authoritative bequeathal, a bequeathing that has to, to be done. Um, and we want to help understand, help our Latter-day Saint neighbors understand that the authority of Jesus is much greater than that. And it dovetails with the gospel because the gospel is that if we hear the, Jesus says in John 5, he who hears my words and believes him who sent me, he has eternal life. Believing the authoritative words of Jesus Christ, knowing his words and works, and believing the person of Jesus Christ brings eternal life immediately. And this dovetails with the gospel.